I'm going to demonstrate this super quick way to draw trees in three easy steps using four very different types of trees. And the first step is to look hard at the canopy shape, at the canopy silhouette of our tree. And when we draw it, we want to avoid drawing an unbroken line such as this. For the first tree, I want to use what I think of as pretty much a generic tree shape. And that will do. For our second tree, I want to use an Australian eucalyptus, a tree that I'm pretty familiar with. And that will do for that. Our third tree is going to be a conifer. And that will do at this point. And for our fourth tree, we're going to look for a palm tree. And that will do at this stage for that. So that's our first easy step. Observe our tree canopy, whatever the leaves or the foliage is doing, to try and get a sense of the shape of the outline of the positions of the, the major lines of it and to just put that very simply onto the paper. We'll go back to our first tree for the second step. The second step is to do the branches and the trunk. The important part of this step is to start at the top of the tree and to work down. We know that our branches get thinner and thinner and thinner as they get further up. That can be difficult to plan when we draw from the ground up, but when we draw from the top down, it's much easier. So we'll just put the ground in where we want it to be. And there we have it. And another tip with drawing branches and particularly tree trunks is to avoid straight, smooth lines. We don't want to draw this. Now for our eucalyptus tree, our gum tree. And that will do for this tree. Our third tree was our conifer. And the main thing is to make sure that we get a credible movement from the top of the tree down to the bottom of the tree. And that will do for that one. And for our palm tree, we now want to suggest the trunk And there we have our palm tree. Now, our third easy step is where the tree really comes together looking like a tree. And this is where we add tonal detail through hatching, particularly to the canopy. The important thing is that we don't try to draw any leaves unless they're very large leaves that we can easily see from where we're standing or like the fronds of the, the palm tree. Generally, we don't want to suggest leaves, individual leaves, because they're just too small. We're trying to capture the effect of light and dark 
on the tree canopy as a whole or on the smaller clumps of leaves that we get, say, in an Australian eucalyptus tree. And we can very easily represent a nice effective image of a tree just with a few momentary strokes of the pen. Now, when we do this, it's important to have a sense of where the light's coming from so that we can make our shadows consistent with the light direction from one source. And then we also can add a little bit of hatching onto our trunks and branches that are consistent with the direction of the light. Here we have our quick and simple tree. So how does this work with a more complex tree, such as our Australian gum tree? And here we have our Australian gum tree. And again, it's a different pattern of light and of dark and the way the shadows are cast on the trunk because light is penetrating in all sorts of places in the canopy, which means parts of some branches and the trunk are in shadow and other parts have been struck by the sunlight. Let's see how this now works with our conifer. And here we have our really quick conifer captured again. We're using our cross hatching and our hatching to indicate the different patchiness of light, or rather the shadow being cast on our tree. And we're trying to put our marks in a direction that indicates all the hanging effect of the pine needles in this particular type of conifer. So how does this now work with our final drawing?
and here we have our palm tree. With the palm tree, there's less hatching to do now because more line work was required to actually create the effect of the palm fronds. So we've gone further before we start to put the hatching on to represent the shadows that the tree captures than we needed to do with the other four trees. So here we have our four very quick gestural trees drawn in a super quick way. They honestly took about three minutes each to draw in life. So the three steps, we do the tree canopy using a very fragmented line, avoiding a heavy outline and trying to capture something of the silhouette pattern of the canopies. Our second step, we do the branches, but instead of starting from the ground up, we start from the tree canopy, the top of the tree canopy down, where it's easier to increase the width going down towards the ground than it is to decrease the width going up from the ground. And then thirdly, we use hatching, cross hatching, to suggest the way the canopy captures the light the roundedness or the jaggedness, whatever effect is captured of form through the patterns of the light on the tree, we try and capture those with hatching. And we mustn't forget to include the tree branches and trunks in that. A super quick way to draw trees really effectively, particularly when they're more in the background of our drawing. Why don't you give this a go? G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I have a playlist on drawing trees. If you'd like a little more detail on my approach and particularly when we're closer to the tree and we want to capture a little more realism than in these super quick drawings here. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.